Hey, I'm the Cathalon Gamer, and this is The Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games and I hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Pro Cycling Manager 2019, Career Mode, Episode 32. Now, after a long period of going through and signing most of the riders for, for next year, got just a little bit of funding left to play around with and one or two vacancies left to fill depending on how where how we handle that situation and after doing some scouting myself i've opted to actually wait a little bit on that signing based on my own employed scouts and what kind of results they're going to get back on some of these writers and see if we can find somebody that does have some potential and will fill a gap for us and not just be a one-year stop gap and then most likely end up letting them go unless they happen to have the quality we need. Uh, so the Tour Alsace is continuing on. This one is not anything major. Uh, it's just a simple sprint stage, 140k. And I've got a couple of sprinters here anyway, and we're already in positions one two three four five after the first stage already inside 20k to go so we're gonna get right up on this finish here real soon now 15k begin to slow it down we're just on a simple circuit here that's almost completely flat there's a little bit of undulation here uh, but it is starting to do damage to the field as we're down into the final 10k which is definitely time to form up i only have five riders here so this is not like a typical stage Get the camera right there we go uh, i do have three sprinters though so uh, i've got mcnulty and coos and these guys are riding for the overall of course after winning that prologue we're already out in front uh, mcnulty and coos have been doing the work here to protect the other riders so uh, i would like to give them that free trip on the back so canter is obviously our sprinter uh, banishek and brian are pretty close to each other and brian's got a plus one while banishek has a minus one, and that's giving him the slight edge for today. I'm going to go ahead and use Brian's gel as well, and we're going to start to pull forward with Banajek here. The final 9k to go. Of course, that's only two lead out riders for a sprinter, and that ultimately means we've got to be careful about pushing too early. So, this is a lot less strong of a lead out than I would normally get. I can see already Banajek 2k kind of near the front and he's feeling it a bit. Gel's starting to kick in but he's only side by side with uh, more in here. 5.7 speed up a little bit more we'll go with 91 here. 5k to go that's enough to get everybody else get their gel used up. Okay 4.5 Okay, time to accelerate Banajek. 2.7 for Brian. Let's see, I'd love to go straight on to a sprint with him, but I can't do that. And they're off. It's going to be very fast. Oh, great sprint by Brian there to find a gap. He's got to keep going, though. Cantor's a little bit off his wheel. And we're down to 900 meters, and Cantor, because he lost Brian's wheel, is actually using a lot of his own energy trying to chase. So, Brian's got to keep going here. Cantor, I need to close it down a little bit. Now, sprint on by. 700 meters and not enough energy. I don't think this is going to go terribly well. He'll overcome his teammate, and only just, really... Christophe Laporte takes the win, Walter Rippert second, Arthur Vicho third. Certainly some good sprinters around us. Cantor comes in eighth after running out of energy too early. Brian eleventh, Coos McNulty. Most of the field was all together for that one. And again, that's exactly what I was talking about. You need more than two lead out riders to really have any sort of chance you need to be 
at the front of the field to be in the right position unless you have a dominant sprinter who can outrace a lot of others. If you are operating on a less than stellar sprinter, if you're just decent quality one, the lead out is more important than the sprinter themselves. With the bonus seconds, after being only one second behind, Christophe Laporte moves into the race lead. And in the coming stages, I'll begin looking at my short list of riders uh, for the possible filling, you know, the remaining vacancies. I still do have a little bit of signing points, about 19 or so. And as all or most of those riders are worth only one or two points, maybe three points in one or two occasions, uh, we should have no problem kind of looking at all of them and seeing who do we want and then A, can we afford them? Uh, or are they asking for too much and do we move on to the next one? Stage three, a couple cat one climbs, but it's early in the stage, shouldn't affect it. Uh, this course climb four times through, uh, it looks like it's not going to be too bad. I, I don't think that's going to do too much damage. The steeper side is the descent, not the ascent, and that'll give us decent opportunity to get all or most of our guys over the top. Uh, but either way, we'll, we'll skip to at least the second sprint point. And if there isn't much damage done to the field, we'll probably just jump in for the final one. I feel like we're at the Yo-Yo World Championships. As the peloton keeps getting larger and smaller and larger and smaller and larger and smaller. But I think we have finally settled into a group of 71. That's probably going to stay where they're at right now. Because the chasing group is two and a half minutes down. The secondary chasing group, which includes Miguel Bryan, are three and a half minutes down. So they are where they are. They're, they're too far off the back. So this is it. The breakaway group has been caught. We're on the penultimate time up the climb right now. And we just topped out. This will be the descent. Next time will be the last time through. And so we're down to four riders of our team here. Now, I also need to get water one last time. We better do that. 20k to go. So Coos, grab some water. We're down to, ah, see, here come those yo-yos again, as the peloton itself is now doing damage and dropping riders off the back. Uh, McNulty and Coos are actually the guys that have been doing the protection, and I'm getting a little bit nervous about keeping them in the position they're in as we go forward. Uh, especially when I have not glanced at the profile of the other stages since loading the game up. As we see here, an attack from Rakita. 73 on hills. I think it's time that I save a sprinter. Ooh, Badashek, you're our guy today. Uh, and we're going to put you behind Coos. I'm going to put you behind McNulty. And Cantor and Cantor. You're going to give some chase here. Oh, just like that. There was a split there for a moment, but the gap was covered. Again with the yo-yo uh, Olympic scene. The pack has just reeled in the escape group. There are just 10 kilometers left. Down to 21 riders. McNulty is fading here. We're almost to the top and he could probably recover. Watch out, a team leader is falling behind. Arquita trying to attack again. Kumbau, Grivko, Atapuma, all trying. These are late, punchy guys. Cantor's got a good downhill, so he can stay on the front. McNulty is going to use everybody's gel. 
4K to go. What I need to do here, hold on, hold your horses. Alright, so what I'm doing is McNulty's tired. I'm going to save him for the overall time. Push him to the back. I'm going to use Coos, who has the energy, who I can use him right now and not burn him out so he'll stay with the group. And then Cantor will be my lead-out guy for Banajek with the energy that he has left. So we've got to push this quick here. There we go. So Sep Coos. It's 2k. His gel just kicked in, so I'm going to use his sprint right now. Alright. Now, he can just cruise home. Canter, you're going to sprint. Okay, keep going, keep going. And now, Banajek in a pretty dang good position, but Christophe Laporte in a slightly better position and Arthur V show right there. Ben Swift might be a little too far down. I think Banajek has a good chance at a top three, but I'm not sure he's going to do much more than that. Good news here is this is 13 and really, whoa, look at that. Look at that. Come on, Banajek. Yes, he'll get above Laporte, but Visho was too strong. Those guys, both of them are a lot stronger. You can see Laporte kind of sat up. He ran out of energy early. Banajek did get there. Well-timed, well-placed, and gets second against better competition near him. Connor Swift, not Ben Swift. Connor Swift, uh, Walter Whippert. Putting those guys behind us is always a good thing. Max. Uh, Cantor should have done better than he did, but ultimately he was on that negative condition today, so I used him up as uh, serving the team, and he served it well, and we end up actually with a small peloton here, so this is going to shake that field up a bit, put a number of riders behind, and yes, of course, Miguel Bryan, but outside of him, the rest of my team all survives, and that's going to be good for the overall standings. Banajek will probably be sitting about third unless Visho had lost time previously. Which I don't think he would have. Is he Kofidis also? No. No, no, no. Vital concept. I don't know how they did on the prologue. Laporte's going to be even further ahead. 10 seconds of Banajek. Visho is up to 11 seconds behind, so yes, it did move him up. But still behind Banajek, so that's good. Uh, Koos, Cantor, McNulty all at 16 seconds down. A little bit of an edge there. Two seconds, another one second to these guys. But we're in pretty good shape after three stages. And we've got the top four in the under 25s. Got a reminder of what the final stages look like. Four, sprint stage. Five, sprint stage. Six, there's the mountain stage. And that's what I need to protect those guys for. So as much as I want to do what I can over the next two stages, I need to be a little more cautious with... McNulty and Coos as I nearly cost Coos there on that stage. Just about burnt him out. Pace is really hot today as we chase down the breakaway group. Breakaway group has just five riders in it. They still have a minute 40, though it was close to five minutes not too long ago. The chase, the peloton, has 94 riders left. The only reason why we split it all is that the chase has been intense. I was mid-80s, had to push up the effort level. I hit 89, had to push up the effort level. I had a 93, we've stayed in place and not been dropped. But you could see the damage done to my team as all five riders are quite tired as we go over the one remaining climb of the day. It's actually still a little bit of climbing to do after this. And then we'll ease off 
to the finish, but we have 13 and a half K to go. And those five riders still over two minutes ahead. I'm going to hit the top here and then form my train and we're going to get moving. I'm going to need to use everyone today. There you go. Uh, also, it's a day of terrible weather, even though the sun is shining at the moment. Uh, but it's drawn my entire team onto negative race day conditions. So we'll see. Banajek has benefit of fitness. And he is not affected in other ways that Cantor is. Cantor's got the minus two. I'm going to use both Coos and McNulty for short stints here. just to help in the chase, because if we have any chance catching that break at two and a half minutes, it's going to have to be a hard and fast chase. Whippert's team trying to make a chase as well. 9.5k, it's still 220, so yeah, I don't think it's happening. Okay, Koos is going to be done here in second. McNulty has started. Uh, uh, what do you call it? His energy gel has taken effect. 6K to go. And it's still two minutes, so we've only pulled back 30 seconds in the last 6K. And we have less than that to go to the finish, so... Minute 38, 4K, McNulty is done. We'll get him to the back, hopefully. We have not done him and Coos and Justice. In fact, I think it's time to back off. It's a minute 40. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of sit up here, and I'm going to concede this sprint. Uh, McNulty and Coos are both very tired. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. 2.9k. I'm going to send Cantor off on his own. And then these guys are going to follow Brian. So Brian's going to take them home. Cantor and Banaszek are going to go solo for an attempt on this. Except for Banaszek has not made his gap. Banaszek still caught behind. Come on. Alright, 1.1k, just everybody sprint. That breakaway takes it. Foosh. Prodhama. Clemenson. I guess it would be Prodhom. Uh, Whipper wins our bunch sprint for six. Bonifacio. Banajek takes third in that group. Of course, I really pulled out of that for the most part. We gave it just a little go there. Not much left to compete for at that point. Those breakaway riders, I don't know what kind of time they might have pulled back, but it really shouldn't impact the overall. Last chance at a sprint in this race. Haven't won one yet, but we've been up there, but there's been three guys that are consistently better than us and we just keep getting into the mix but we haven't been able to get better than second as of yet of course one of the contributing factors to that is the fact that we only have five riders two riding for the overall that i'm afraid to burn up but today could be our day canter on a plus three this should put him on the level of laporte and whipper and v show uh, and actually even better than V-Show, uh, to date anyway. Uh, Brian's on a minus one though, and 
Banajix on a minus two, so we just keep getting negatives with these guys, uh, despite everybody having really good fitness levels. And the weather's fine. The weather really is fine. There's no reason for them to be on negatives. Uh, I've just, throughout this race, been drawing a lot of negatives. Big positive, though, from Cantor. See if we could do something with it. So Koos will start pulling right away. He's already to the front, but he's got to get up there. Uh, breakaway still has two riders left, but they're down to 20 seconds. And Koos already up there. McNulty's there. Bad as Jack. Come on, guys. Get out in the open. Close it on up to the front. Come on. Wasting a lot of energy here with 6k to go. Now we're finally there. And we're going to go ahead and use these gels. They're going to recover some of that. 5k. And Koos, his job is done. We'll go ahead and send him to the back with Nolte. Three point six. That's his job done inside three K now. And now Banachek. Get our first part of the lead out going. Two point four. He's gonna start his sprint. Two point two. Banachek has lots of energy. He's gonna get a strong pull, keeping us in a better position here. One point three. One point two. I'm going to keep him going so he can maybe get a decent place overall. Ooh, Brian. Brian, what is up with your sprint here? Let's go ahead and sprint to everyone. Canter. 800 meters, full strength. And he is level with Laporte and Visho. Boué is too far behind. What's that? Whipper. Ah, oh, that's Whipper right there. Okay, so I think he's he should have Whippert beat here. He's got a lot of space around. Brian to the left. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to use Brian and do well, kind of a douche move here. And I'm going to see if I can block <laughs> these guys. Canter, what happened? You never even overcame your own teammate. So Laporte takes the win. Brian actually hangs on for second. Cantor only takes fourth. I don't know what happened. He never really seemed to get up to speed because Brian, with a little bit of energy, well, no, Brian was still sprinting, so never mind. Uh, Brian, you can see, Brian had a little bit of energy left at the end. Cantor just never really got up to speed. But, of course, Brian's a sprinter, too. That's the whole point. He was leading him out. And we did have that extra energy, you know, as, as the other guys were coming down to it. McNulty and Coos both up there in the standings. But that was weird that Cantor on his plus three couldn't even overtake Brian there at the end even though Cantor would have had considerably more speed. He should have been able to make one bike's length and he didn't. He was essentially in the exact same spot so I don't know what was up with Cantor on that. Uh, why he wasn't able to do more there. I think he should have at least beaten Brian. Uh, maybe not Laporte. We could have had a 2-3 that way. Hey, we still got second place. So I'll take... I'll take that result. Laporte's hard to beat, though. He, he is a much better sprinter than my guys. Next year... <laughs> Jasper Philipson can compete with Laporte. The only way we beat Laporte is if he's completely out of position by the time we get to the end, or we somehow otherwise beat him. But yeah, kind of disappointing from Cantor on that one. In terms of the overall, Laporte now 26 seconds clear of my two contenders on the final stage. Bad mountain rating, though. He should be out. Visho might not. He, he could hang about. And he is nine seconds clear. Banachek, of course, will get dropped. Cantor will get dropped. Koos, McNulty, my two guys on that climb. Koos, better mountain rating, but worse resistance rating. So they'll be pretty level. And I guess it'll depend on race day condition on which one kind of pull for at the end or whether we try to uh, 
relay those two guys. Atapuma, 73 mountain rating, decent resistance. He'll certainly be a contender. He's only two seconds behind us. Bouet will try, but he'll fail. Connor Swift, definitely a contender. Jasper will hang about for a while, but I think ultimately he'll get dropped. Same with Imhoff and Foss. But those within, well, really, we're only at 26, so it's not like there's a big gap. You could still have somebody well down the order here win this race if they split the field enough. Barring a fall that just took place that put some of the riders off back and they've got a chance of getting back, Peloton at 91 riders very well could be this is the max we're going to see it at. We've only done one climb so far, but we're immediately onto our second climb. And then we've got another big climb and a couple intermediate climbs around in between and then the final climb. So it's pretty relentless in that we're going from one climb to another to another. And just in that moment of trying to form the breakaway that you can see off in the distance ahead, 10 riders off the front, it's done damage to the field. Banaszek, Brian, already pretty fatigued. Now the descent, they recovered a little bit, but they're not going to last terribly long unless the pace really lifts. If it does, then I could see the field coming back together. Yeah, but at this point, it's looking like a lot of riders are going to finish well, well off the back. And there is absolutely no point whatsoever of trying to focus on guys like Banajek, Brian, or Cantor, who are near the top of the standings based on time, when this is purely a climber stage. Brian and Banaszek are actually already done. Uh, we're going to go ahead and now use Cantor, the next best climber, surprisingly, to now protect Coos. Today, the decision between which guy to go for, McNulty or Coos, is pretty simple. We already saw that they have very similar ratings. Coos has one better mountain rating. McNulty has a plus four in resistance. However, Coos with a plus two rating today is... Mountain is a 78, his resistance is a 74. McNulty, meanwhile, stays at 74 for the Mountain. And his resistance drops to a 71, making the decision very, very easy for me. And I see a lot of riders just going backwards, including these two guys that are going to uh, have a long ride home from here. Peloton's already down to 62, and the groups off the front are disintegrating themselves, so we're going to be pulling back a lot of those guys. Cantor already himself fading. Oh my goodness. This Peloton is tiny with 120k to go. Cantor's done. He's out. There's one rider coming back, Moreno. He's a good climber. I have a feeling that he might have been one of the ones caught in that crash a while ago. And he's trying to cover the gap himself. Lafay off the back. He's a 70. 29 riders are all that's left. And it's Coos and McNulty. Now, like I said, Coos is the guy that I'm going to ride for now. So McNulty. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, dude, but you're going to spend your day uh, in a different role than I expected. Expected you to be protected all the way till the final climb, or at least just about. And no, he's going to spend most of the day protecting Coos. We're down to just 23 riders, and only two riders left off the front. This is crazy how fast this field has disintegrated. You can see uh, Cantor, who was just dropped already two and a half minutes behind. Uh, Brian and Banajek both 10 to 11 minutes behind. Peloton's back up to 30 riders, couple coming back at us, but not many. So we quickly go through here for a while. It's category one coming up. One rider giving chase, trying to get back on. Gap's not really growing or shrinking. He's kind of caught in that no man's land. There are three more riders behind him that might be catching up. 
But here we go. We start to climb, and the rain starts to fall as we hit the base of the climb. Quite a few riders behind. They could still come back at us. Uh, we're not too worried about the breakaway as it's one rider in a minute 50. Minute 13. It's opening back up a bit. That's just fluctuating. Peloton back down to 22 riders now, 21 riders. McNulty pretty tired here, but he's hanging in there. 19 riders left. One rider still ahead. Won't be an easy catch. I'm going to give McNulty a break. He needs to recover. And I'm going to send Koos to actually get the water right now as he's fresh. And this next climb is simple. He needs McNulty's help. So uh, I'm actually going to swap them for a little bit. Use Koos to protect McNulty over this section of climb because he's not going to get to the finish alone and he needs McNulty down to 19 now I think that last one's probably going to make it back one or two guys will anyway alright so Koos is fresh so at this point him protecting McNulty is not hurting him at all but it's helping McNulty recover more quickly which is nearly done and there it is Slow this back down for a minute, and it's time to reverse this. Team, teammate working for teammate, and then vice versa. One minute is the gap off the front. It's Imhoff. Surprisingly, Imhoff is even in the break. Uh, it's high up the standings. He's in 14th overall, 69 mountain rating. So you can see why he's that last survivor. But as we go back into the group, uh, Vangstad is about to catch up. Moreno never did catch up to us. And that guy just made it back, so we're up to 20. We've got Atapuma, Tarame, Visho, Rakita, Swift. There's Grivko, all there. I do not know. Is the race leader in our group? I don't think so. Uh, we've got a green jersey and a blue jersey. Not sure what jerseys those are, uh, but we're already starting the uh, penultimate climb here. And let's look, is Laporte here? Oh, there's Moreno who caught us but is being dropped. And no, Laporte's long gone. So Laporte is now out of the picture. And that means Visho is the highest placed. 17 seconds down overall. My two guys, McNulty and Coos, were 26. So we are 9 seconds off the race lead right now. Except Imhoff was... Let's see what is it? Seven? Is he seven? Yeah, seventeen seconds behind. So he's the virtual race leader right now with a minute eighteen gap. He's pulled. He's got a minute lead virtually right now. But that final climb, I, I don't think he stands much of a chance. Making this all about the last climb. I don't want to do anything right now. Neither does anyone else, apparently. But Imhoff's riding all alone, so... Even though the pace isn't severe, he's still going to be really tired when we hit that final climb. Alright, so we drop a couple guys. Gaps at a minute, so we pulled back. About 20 seconds on him. McNulty recovering fairly well. 
Ugh, we're going to have to go across the flat for a while. At this point, I'm just grateful that there's still other teams willing to work. So I'm going to save it for that final climb, or I'd like to. Uh, you can definitely see the middle part of the climb is the steepest. And it's far from the steepest climb that we've been on today. Ooh. For a moment there, we were down to 12 riders. I don't know what happened to those seven, but whatever contact they lost, they quickly recovered from. Yeah, gap is sh shrinking, so uh, Imhoff is being pulled back. So he should be an easy catch and really not be a contender. Uh, he'll be too tired to hit that climb with any sort of force. McNulty not really recovering here, but Coos is at full strength, and most of these guys do not have teammates. Let's see how many do. Uh, Turgis and Bago. Bago. It's not Enrique Moss, but it is a Moss. Bryce Filu. Really, only most of these are all solo riders. Almost entirely. Get two here. Leknesund and Skarseth. That Danish team. But that's about it. Uh, did Arkea Samsic have two? They did. They have three. 10k to go, and we are already starting to climb. The lead is down to 26 seconds. Uh, McNulty, you're going to use your gel right now. Watch out. A team leader is falling down. 20 seconds, so Imhoff's day is done. Atapuma is attacking. So Koos, we're going to get the acceleration out of McNulty. And McNulty's done, so Koos is now going to be on his own in the chase. And quickly, we're down to nine riders. Now Koos, I don't want to attack yet. 7k to go. We'll do our posturing. Uh, McNulty, ride alone, good. Keep myself fresh. 7k to go. This is the steepest section coming up. I want that gel. I want to pull away here in just a moment. We're down to eight riders. Coming up on that steepest section. Come on, Gel. Can you kick in for me? I've got to be fresher than most all of these guys, as I was one of the only ones with a teammate around. All right, it's time to go. It's time to go. Little acceleration. Rakita, Visho. Now look at how they're attacking continuously. Meanwhile, Koos is just hanging in there. Yeah. Okay, save it. Three-man group. Three-man group. McNulty's three minutes down now. Is there any more opportunities? It's going to level off here. And then we've got two uphills. 2.8k. And let's attack now. Two-man group. That's low on gas won't be able to keep up. Okay, wait again, wait again. Two-man group. It's us and Visho. Oh, no, he's back. He's back. 1.3K. Oh, we just ran out of energy. It's okay if Rikita takes it if we're with him because we've got him beat on time. Rikita is 38 seconds down. No, it's not in the... Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, 10 second, 6 second bonus. He'll only gain 4. It's okay if Rikita takes it. We have second. We could have the overall. Oh, no, no, no. Visho is down on time. I think... I think Koos just won the overall. I think he did enough. So Rikita is probably going to move up to third. Koos will have the overall. Visho will drop to, or will remain second ultimately. McNulty, way downhill here. Six minutes. That's how much time he lost in that short period. 
And that's still 11th place for McNulty. Dang. Canter, 5k to go. Hang on, you got dropped there for a moment. 2k to go. Oh, there's Laporte. And he beat Laporte to the finish. There you go. <laughs> Brian, he's got 5k to go. He's riding solo. 4k to go. Let's try to accelerate a little bit here, huh? Break your position some, huh? Banajek. Brian moved up to 100th. Banajek just outside 103. Cantor took 44th. Nick Nolte, despite playing the team game, still managed an 11th place finish, so that was that was nice. Uh, Imhoff, the last guy from the break, ends up in 14th. Some of those top guys that were in the group still... McNulty kind of split them all. Like I said, I think we, I think we did it. Rakita wins the stage, but all he's going to get is same time, so he'll pick up four seconds on Coos. Ten second bonus, six second bonus. V show eighteen seconds down. That covers the gap plus a couple second bonus over him, and there it is. Seb Coos for the win overall without winning a stage, but oh so close. Rakita takes second. Visho slips to third. Adapuma fourth. Connor Swift in fifth. McNulty hangs on for tenth overall. It's time that he gained earlier, so that's good because he also managed to get into the top ten. Coos wins the under-25s competition, and as a team, we dropped to 6th overall, but that's okay. Not worried about it, because we won the overall of the race. That's the most important part. That's worth the most points, so I'm happy with that, despite the only stage win being the prologue, and that having little impact on the overall. The final stage really was the decisive moment. Uh, Caleb Ewan winning the Ride London, uh, London Surrey Classic, Full Song taking the Cyclista San Sebastian, Jumbo Visma losing some budget. That's not, not something they can afford. It's an excellent team on a mid-level budget. For them to have their budget drop uh, is something that would essentially ruin them. So in terms of the rankings, we are still doubling up just about everybody else, and we are 17th in the Super Prestige. We definitely did pick up some points here. So we're looking good. Victory 73 on the season, that's crazy. So many of those were youth victories that didn't even count his points. But we're still into this, so it's the 5th of August. Uh, the next race is on the 12th of August. Before I start that race, that race, Tour of Utah, will be in the next episode. But I am going to skip forward for just a little bit, and we're going to check if any of the scouting reports have come back by the 12th of August prior to entering that race. All right, so first, the updates. Valverde, extending with Movistar. Ewan, extending. Sam Bennett, extending. Campenarts, extending. Michael Matthews, going to Bora Hansgrohe. Bob Youngles, Katusha Alpeson. Dan Martin, extending. Carapaz going to group on my FTJ. Rally's budget dropping, and last I saw, they had zero rider signed for next season. 
uh, and a lowered budget, this could be really bad for them. They they will probably be on their way down to Continental. Uh, Kwiatkowski extending, Gilbert extending, Lampart extending, Roglic going to Bora Hansgrohe. So Bora with two big pickups. Uh, Froome extending, AG2R's budget is down. All right, so that's the news as of right now. It's 12th of August, ready to start the tour of Utah. But like I said, we're going to take a look now and see if there's any developments, especially on the uh, feedback from my scouts. Now, Lukic was somebody we were looking at, but these are the guys that I've added since. A couple of them were already here. Okay, so Gregory Daniel, I did get my feedback on him. Four to six is not bad. He's 24 years old right now. He's a 70 already. But here's the thing, he's a Barador, so breakaway rider. He's got a 77 Barador rating. In career mode on your team, that means nothing. This is AI controlled. How likely is a rider to join a breakaway? So if I quick sim a race, then he would likely join a breakaway. But anytime that I race, which is what I care about, that would be nothing. As he's not AI controlled. So he's got a good flat rating. He's got a decent time trial prologue. He's okay on the hills. Cobbles is tolerable. He's got good acceleration, good downhill, okay salmon and resistance to the point where he could be used in a number of different ways at an average of 70. If he wanted next to nothing, then uh, yeah, I could go for it. And maybe we could change his rider type over, well, probably not. <laughs> that type of writing is not, rating is not going away anytime soon. Ian Garrison, somebody I've had on my 2018 career mode, still have. There, a sprinter, really good potential, okay, and already a good time trialist. That is one of the holes that I wanted to fill. So Ian Garrison, I will almost certainly go for Garrison here, especially with just two points being the cost. Uh, Sans, this is the guy that we scouted uh, over the course of the season, the youth rider. Already punchy, acceleration, okay cobbles. Already has a decent reputation of sorts and is excellent potential. So I think we might be going for Garrison and Sands first and foremost. I'll take a look at the rest, see if we have anything yet. No. Mather, okay, no no to him, bad potential. Shinko, four or five, that's not bad. And then this is another one with Total domestique for a couple seasons, but has really good potential, can grow into something excellent. But yeah, there, I, th I think it's pretty clear that Garrison and Sance are the two that I'd like to go for right away. So let's go ahead and contact Garrison. And looking at the budget, we have 14,000 remaining. I like that we're starting here. It is an attractive team for him. I do like three years. Uh, I think it's funny that Sprinter is the role. Uh, I'd like you as, let's say, important writer.
Okay, that's almost enough. It's just the interest level that didn't put him over the top, so he'll need just a small bump. I think we can afford that. 3,000. There you go. That's good. That's good signing. We've got 11,000 left. Sance, the potential. I want him as well. Oof, no interest. I forgot about that part. Put him as an important rider. I think we're going to have to instantly go higher. I don't think he's going to be happy, but he'll be there eventually. We'll see what we can get from this. Now the the interest is the only thing that's holding him back. It's definitely not changing the team index at all. And he's not filling a need. This is a rider for the future. I don't know if I want to spend much more than this. I would need to spend a little bit more, 4,500 of 11,000 remaining. For a high potential guy. He's already a 74 on the hills. Resistance is only a 66, but... I don't really want... I don't... Mm. Oh, man. I feel like I'm going to make a mistake if I offer him this and sign him. But I think three years on that deal, he's going to develop a lot. What's what's this? What is this? He's at 100. Is he not signing? <laughs> okay, no, I'm not going to spend 5,000 on him. No. Uh, what was your potential? A uh, four to six, but what? What are you gonna do for us? So, we got Garrison. He's ready to sign. We'll confirm that. So we've got eleven thousand left. Uh, in terms of needs, I've got the time trialist now with Garrison. Uh, Sans is out. He's not worth what he's asking just because he doesn't care for the team. That's one of the hard parts in trying to sign somebody at this point is it's not someone we've built a dossier on at all. Uh, Tortora could be an option. High potential domestique just to fill the domestique role. Try to go get water out early in a race. Always first man, you know gonna be a long time before he's of use otherwise but doesn't hurt to have domestiques on your team but the one thing I'm still missing in terms of a void that I would like to fill is somebody with a good cobble rating so I think I'm gonna do a little search for that uh, try to scout out somebody there I've got 11,000 I, I should be able to get one decent rider in uh, We'll see what I can do with that that money still. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. And remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe. And tune in next time on my road to the record. We're at 15 this year. We're at 15 for next year now. And we're looking to sign one or two more. Improved on the sprint, down on the GC with Koos out, slightly up on the hills. 
almost level on cobbles. We're close. <laughs> We're close. Bye for now.